Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 as usual and today I've got a tank review for you guys. We'll be talking about the T-34, a tier 8 American heavy premium tank and it is very expensive so you'll have to pay actual money for this tank and it costs 12,000 gold so that will set you back about 40 euros if that's your currency. So it is very expensive and that's why I'll be going over this tank's strengths and weaknesses and I'll show you some gameplay so that we can together make up our mind whether you should invest into a T-34 or not because as we already pointed out it is a very expensive investment. Now I just wanted to tell you something quite interesting because many people don't realize that but way back in the day when I first started playing this game and I was, you know, chugging around the battlefield in like, crappy little tanks like, you know, the T1 Cunningham or something like that. The T-34 actually was a tier 9 tank. It was just a standard tier 9 vehicle, like the M103 now, in the American heavy tank line. The T-30, which is now actually in American tier 9 TD, used to be the tier 10 American heavy tank. And then, I think in patch 7.2 or something, these vehicles were swapped around and quite a few new tanks were introduced like the T125, M103 and the T34 became a tier 8 premium tank. Now the funny thing was back then when you owned a T34 and a T30 when that change happened you actually were allowed to keep your T-34, so you got a tier 8 premium tank, gifted basically. You also got the M103 as replacement for the tier 9 heavy you lost. You got the T-125 as replacement for the tier 10 heavy you lost. And you also were able to keep the T-30 as a tier 9 tank destroyer, so you almost instantly got the, unlocked the complete American tank destroyer line. So, really you just completely won the jackpot in terms of World of Tanks research when that happened to you. Unfortunately I wasn't progressed enough at the time so uh, for me it didn't have that much effect only that I had to pay money to get the T-34. Before we have a detailed look at the stats I just want to quickly make a quick detour into what tank viewer to have a look at this tank's armour profile because it's part of what makes this vehicle unique and very interesting so I'll see you in a second. So we'll be taking a look at this tank's armour profile now and as you can see it is actually quite interesting. There are quite a lot of different armour zones so I'm just going to quickly take this apart for you guys. Now as you can see obviously the turret is very beefy, it's got a massive gun mantlet at the front with a 279mm zone of armour right here. Uh, backed up by 203mm of armour around the side of the mantlet. Behind this armour, if you get through it, there basically is an armour hole, but still, I mean, you'll have to bring up kind of 280, maybe even 300mm of penetration, depending on how well this um, gun mantlet is angled. And uh, that means that really you should never ever try to shoot a T-34 in the gun mantlet. It is basically an unpenetrable safe zone for this tank. Then for the non-spaced armour on the turret, interestingly at the rear of the turret you get 203mm. Now you know that you'll be in for a treat as turrets go if you get 203mm of rear turret armour. So really... Unless you can avoid it, don't even shoot this tank in the rear of its turret. I mean, most guns at the tier will have the penetration to go through 203mm of armour flush, but it's not always a flush shot, sometimes it will be angled, and a lot of tier 7 and 6 vehicles will be unable to penetrate that even. So, yeah, that is very good armour. Then we've got a 178mm armour zone, which is actually really good because, as you can see, it's angled very well. So you'll get very, very many bounces. However, some high tier heat or other premium shells might be able to penetrate this. But still, this is de facto something like, I mean, it's definitely north of 200 millimeters of effective armor thickness, probably going towards 300 millimeters. So it will be really tough. But I've seen people actually putting shots through this part of the armor up here, but it is a very tricky shot to take. Also good news is that on your cupola, 
you get 178 millimeters all round on this lower ring so that is very good and because it's rounded so it's quite well angled it's not a guaranteed penetration although this is quite a big weak spot it will be quite difficult to penetrate even if you hit although obviously it will be a better option than going for the gun manflet then size we get 127 millimeters that is actually still really really good armor and especially as i said if the turret's angled that will be really good but i mean this turret's basically all round just perfect a very narrow 102 millimeter armor strip up here but we also get 102 millimeters of upper glacius armor now that is not good at all considering that the angling is well somewhat underwhelming really anything will penetrate this react tier 8 it will maybe give you some ricochets against tier 7 medium tanks and tier 6 tanks but at tier 8 and considering that this tank will get into tier 10 battles sometimes i mean this hole is kind of paper thin i've had situations where i've bounced russian 122 millimeter shells from the tier 7 tanks and tier 8 tanks but don't rely on it you really shouldn't then 76 millimeters at the side of the hull, at the frontal part. That is actually very easy to penetrate and even the tracks won't really be doing too much there. So your side armor is really bad and actually side scraping is not that good of an option in this tank. Then 70 millimeters for the lower glaciers, that is very bad. At, at least it's angled more than the upper glaciers. It's still very bad though. The machine gun port, 70 millimeters as well, so you can go for that if you're stuck for weak spots yeah but for the rest of the armor i'm just gonna kind of go around it just like this because it's not really that important this part of the armor here is 51 millimeters on top you actually only get 38 i believe so the rear of this tank the entire rear section behind the turret ring is actually really really easy to penetrate and do module damage to the engine too for example and that's why you always have to try to hide the sides and especially the rear in this tank although your turret has got really good all-round armor your hull really hasn't upper part of the cupola isn't very well armored either however it's angled quite well still if you can try to go for the upper part of the cupola rather than the lower ring here and then also another thing that I should point out is that the top of the turret and the top of the hull, the engine deck, they're really vulnerable to RT. So if you're an artillery player, feel free to feast on these tanks. They are really squishy when it comes to artillery shots. So yeah, that was basically the armor. All in all, we can basically say that the T-34 has got really good turret armor and really bad hull armor so if you've got the choice always decide to shoot this tank in the hull as a t-34 driver obviously it means for you you have to find hull down positions behind rubble or undulations and try to make that turret armor work for you one thing that i'd quickly like to point out is that many people shoot the t-34 here in this corner but that can be very difficult because unless you shoot in here at an angle, this here is actually not part of a hitbox if we look at the collision model. We can see this is not a hitbox, so I would not recommend firing at this part unless you can avoid it. Obviously, if you fire at an angle and you've got enough penetration, you'll go through the side armor, but it's a risky shot to take, so avoid that. Okay, so let's go back to the garage to analyze the rest of this tank stats. So now that we got an overview over the armor of this tank, which is really quite interesting, I will now compare the stats of this tank to those of another tier 8 premium vehicle. And I'm speaking of the Löwe. This is a tier 8 German heavy premium tank. And actually these two vehicles are quite similar in their playstyle in my opinion. So obviously we have some differences. So we will be comparing these two to get an um, understanding of the T-34 stats. So first of all, the T-34 gets 1,500 hit points. That's actually on the lower end as tier 8 heavy tanks go. It is still alright, but it could be a bit better. I think see the Löwe also gets quite a bit more. And the Louvre is way heavier. <laughs> it's like ridiculously heavy. I mean, still the T-34 has got quite a decent weight, so that's no problem. And actually the T-34 gets a more powerful engine, so you can imagine that the power-to-weight ratio on the T-34 is just going to be that much better than on the Louvre. The 
top speed however is exactly the same so downhill you shouldn't be noticing that much of a difference and the T34 turns slower at 22 degrees per second. Also the turret turns at only 4 degrees per second rather than 5 degrees per second that the Louvre has. Now the mobility stats of both of these tanks are really horrible but the T-34 in terms of maneuverability is actually worse off than the Louvre. And that's one of the T-34's main downsides is that because you've got very bad hull and especially turret reverse speed, it can be very difficult to counter carousel and flanking maneuvers from light and medium tanks. So if you get isolated and picked off by a medium tank wolf pack, you'll usually be dead. Same thing kind of goes for the Louvre, but it's not as extreme with the Louvre. However, you'll be able to get out of and also into sticky situations more quickly due to your good power to weight ratio on the T-34. We already talked about the armor, but I still want to quickly highlight this. You can see that the hull armor obviously is not very good. We already discussed that. It's worse than the Louvre's. The Louvre's hull armor isn't too great either, but it is actually way better than that of the T-34. Side and rear armor is quite bad with both of them, but the fact that the Louvre gets these 25mm more side armor allows him to side scrape and you really can't, so uh, that actually makes quite a difference. The thing is that the turret of the Louvre looks way less well armored than that of the T-34, but that's actually not quite right because as you can see the Louvre has got a kind of a pointed gun shield here and that makes the turret angling really ridiculous so it's basically almost impossible to penetrate the Louvre's turret frontally. However, the Louvre has got way more problems with people penetrating these cheeks of his turrets from the front than the T-34 has. So usually I would now go into detail about the guns but before I do that I just want to quickly compare the gun stats as we can see them right here because these are quite interesting. Now the standard shell damage for the T-34's gun is 400 and the standard shell damage for the Louvre's gun is 390. So just looking at those stats you could think the damage difference is 10 alpha damage, that doesn't make any difference at all. But that is actually wrong because if we look at the damage spectrum with the T-34 it goes from 300 to 500 and that is the highest alpha damage that you will get on any tier 8 heavy tank. With the Louvre however it is only 240 to 400 so although the Louvre's gun gets 390 alpha damage it can only roll for up to 400 alpha damage and also the lowest roll you get on the Louvre can be 60 HP lower than that of the T-34 meaning that on average you'll be doing way more damage with a T-34 and you can just pull off those really lucky shots and just generally RNG will be a way bigger problem for you in the Louvre than it will be the T-34. So that is quite interesting. Really that was all I wanted to point out. Before we go to uh, look at the rest of the gun stats in detail, I just want to quickly compare the rest of the other stats. So we've got 360 view range, that is actually quite underwhelming on the T-34 side against 400 of the Louvre which is really excellent but you get better signal range hooray <laughs> now I mean signal range can be quite important especially when we come to talk about this tank's place later on so yeah as promised the gun starts so it's interesting to note that both these tanks get very competitive tier 9 guns although they are only premium tanks and at this point I'd like to remind you that these vehicles both don't get enhanced matchmaking, so you can and will face tier 10 games in these tanks. So, rate of fire, we already discussed that, is not great on both of these guns, but it's still quite a bit better on the Louvre's gun than on the T-34's gun, with 5 rather than 4. I just want to quickly break this 4 rounds per minute down for you. That really means you'll be reloading for 15 seconds, but with equipment and crew skills and so on like I at the moment reload something like 11 seconds I think on this gun uh, you'll be able to sit in the gameplay so it's actually not too bad and many people think the T-44 has got a really really bad reload and kind of try to rush him in it and then they punish for it because they just overestimate the reload 
the penetration is probably one of the best things about the T-34's gun. Gets 248. That's probably like the best penetration of any of the tier 8 heavy tanks. The Lewis penetration is very good too, just not as good. And also the premium ammo penetration is slightly better on the T-34. However, it's not much of a difference. Uh, they both fire APCR rather than heat ammo. And the HE penetration is exactly the same. Now, I actually, I'm really sorry, I messed up the Luvis Alpha damage. It looks like it's only 320 rather than 390, so I'm sorry about that. That was my mistake. So, yeah, this means that the T-34 actually hits a lot harder than the Luva. 80 average damage more, and it can roll for up to 500 with its AP shells. That is really a lot. And the HE damage goes up to 515. That is just super strong. The accuracy is actually very good at 0.35 for this kind of a high alpha damage, high penetration gun, high caliber. It is 0.35 is really good. Obviously, it cannot even compete with the 0.33 accuracy that the Luva gets. But still, 0.35 is very good. And it will allow you to even hit long range shots. Now here we come to the main issue that the T-34 has and that is its 3.4 second aiming time. That is abysmally long, like, I mean, you know, you can go to McDonald's while you're waiting for this gun to aim, come back and then take your shot. It literally is that bad. It is very, very bad aiming time compared to the Louvre's 2.9, which is ridiculously good. So. Gun wise, overall, it it's really situational which gun's gonna be better. But overall, I feel like the Louvre's gun just seems to be the better gun, just better rounded, more useful all in all. Because I mean, for your shot to do damage and so on, you first will have to hit it, and the DPM is actually probably better on the Louvre's gun. Although I didn't check this. One thing I should point out though is that the T-34 gets 10 degrees of gun depression which is really good because it allows you to use your turret armor and go hold down and use way more situations than the Louvre who gets not very good gun depression. So yeah, those were the stats really and so far I mean the T-34 looks like, I mean it's got some really Im impressive stats like it's armor on the turret and the gun alpha damage and penetration where you just think wow this is so good but then you look at things like the maneuverability the aiming time the hull armor and you're really disappointed so it's a mix of awesome and horrible stats so far and to really improve those stats and work around your weaknesses i would definitely go for bravs and arms and the entire crew first of all that is really key on this tank just to get down the loading time and the aiming time and get a grip on the maneuverability and so on. That's very, very important. Then obviously sixth sense and repairs, safe storage is a really good idea on your loader. I actually went for adrenaline rush on the second loader here, but that's not really a very essential crew skill. Then situational awareness is always useful. Smooth ride and snapshot are really good skills on the T-34 because your aiming time is so bad and actually the shot dispersion is huge. Like if you just jiggle your mouse once while you're trying to take a shot, it will completely reset your aiming circle. So this will just help so much. These two crew skills, smooth ride and snapshot, really make sure to get them. Then I also now started picking up jack of all trades on my commander because I guess this tank takes quite a lot of critical damage because of its weak hull armor, so that will be useful. And because this tank is so hard hitting, I figured doing some more crits with Deadeye would be useful probably, so that's why I picked that up. Now, the equipment lineup on this vehicle is somewhat controversial. You definitely want to have vertical stabilizers and the tank gun rammer. For third piece of equipment, some people say improved vents, and I count myself to that group of people. Others say you should actually take the enhanced gun lane drive over vents just to get that aiming time under control. Now, in my opinion, vents is just so good on this vehicle that it cannot really be replaced by just aiming time because vents just gives you everything and it also improves your aiming time. So, in my opinion, vents is better, but 
you'll have to decide for yourself. I just have a few games, first of all, and decide how annoying you think the aiming time is. And if you think you can cope with it the way it is, then mount vents. And if it's a real big problem, then go for enhanced gun lane drive. Both fits viable, but I would prefer vents. So, uh, play style of this tank. Now, when I first got this tank, I played it completely wrong, and I got really frustrated because I played it the way I would say play my M103 or my IS3 or IS6. I just uh, basically pressed RRR, went to the front line and tried to slug it out. And obviously I was completely destroyed because of my really bad all round and frontal hull armor characteristics. So then I had to reconsider and find out what I was doing wrong. And actually the reason why I wasn't performing well in this tank and why I actually hated this tank for some time was because this is not a frontline heavy tank. You have to think of this tank like a tank destroyer. I mean, it doesn't really have a turret that turns. I mean, 18 degrees per second traverse speed on the turret. So that is really bad. Like, that is as bad as on the M18 Hellcat. Actually, it's 2 degrees better even than on the Hellcat. But still, it is really, really abysmal turret traverse speed. So you are very vulnerable to flanking, just like a tank destroyer. You've got a very hard hitting gun with a long aiming time, just like a tank destroyer. You are very accurate, like a tank destroyer. And you aren't very maneuverable, like a tank destroyer. So I get into a hold down position somewhere on the second or third line and take ranged shots at your enemies. And the only situation in which I would get close up in this tank is in which I've got really much backup so that I cannot be flanked, or I get into a very good aggressive hold down position, or I mean my team's just cleaning up, those are the three scenarios in which I would go aggressive in this vehicle, otherwise you always want to play quite passive, and that way you can perform very very well in the T-34. Yeah, that's really it, and that's just the, the trick to playing this tank, I feel. Obviously, if that kind of place still bores you, then maybe the T-34 won't be the tank for you. But actually, in my opinion, it is a really strong tank now that I've figured out how to play it, and I really enjoy it. I just want to quickly go over my ammunition loadout as well. I run 27 AP shells, 5 armor-piercing composite rigid shells. I don't really uh, need these very often because the base penetration is very good on the AP ammo, and I also run two HE shells. I only run two because the reload is very long on this gun, it doesn't carry much ammunition and you usually won't be firing about that many shots anyway and that's why I need all the AP I can get rather than the, the HE. So one drawback of this gun is that the AP shots cost 1060 uh, per bang so that is actually quite a lot and if you continuously fire this gun it will set you back quite a lot in terms of credit earning. But still, because the reload is not that high, it will be under control, probably. And the premium ammo is quite pricey too, however, it's not like ridiculous like heat ammo or something. And then, nothing funky for consumables, just for state kit, repair kit, and fire extinguisher. Yeah, I hope this gave you a good overview of this tank stats, and let's head into some gameplay to see how this tank actually performs out there on the battlefield. So our first game for today will be on steps. We spawned in a tier 9 match, that is quite standard for this tank I'd say. And by the way I'd like to point out that because lots of you guys complained about the frame rate issues that there were in some of my previous videos, I changed my recording program to a program that compresses the file after the recording, not during the recording. So I hope that will enhance the performance. If it doesn't, I'll... Um, I'll change my graphic settings, but I'm quite reluctant to do that just because I want to give you guys the footage in the best possible quality I can give it to you. So, um, yeah, I've come to quite an aggressive position on uh, Steps um, Western flank here, and I've been dishing out quite a lot of damage to that of those two German Tier 7 and Tier 9 heavy tanks. However, I've taken a lot of punishment too, and by the way, right there, you could see my bad aiming time. Uh, when I come around this corner, you'll be able to see it now again. Just look at this. Look, 
if I had been in another tank with better aiming time, I would have been able to aim that shot and hit the tiger. But I wasn't just because my reticle took too long to settle on the target and I had to draw back into cover because otherwise I would have just taken too much damage. And yeah, damage I did take quite a lot. And you can see the shot penetrating the hull armor there. Obviously nobody went for a sturdy turret, but a hull take took quite a lot of punishment. So I decided to relocate because I realized that one shot from either of those two tanks there isn't, will be enough to take me out now. So I decided to change flanks and re-engage my enemies from a different angle. Now this right here is actually not a bad position at all. I see that that ISU was making a move out again, so I uh, position myself to take a shot and managed to take him out. So that's one very dangerous enemy vehicle removed from the battlefield. And this is actually quite a good position I'm in right here now. Because as you can see, the most of my hull is covered by the rock and I can still take shots at these German heavies here. So the VK drives forwards allow allowing me to take up the Tiger 1 with an ammo rack shot. You can see this is quite an old replay so the, um, the, the uh, turret flying off, that animation is not included in the game yet. So this A T15 is closing the gap on the VK and I'm very lucky here that he doesn't have the gun depression to hit me but I put a shot into his side armor maybe tracking him I'm not sure anyway he decides to change direction in which he's driving and go back behind the rock now he wants to ambush this AT15 does that successfully as well but I managed to get quite a lot of damage off against him now I know that I can probably beat his reload, so I'm going quite aggressive here, looking to put a shot into his lower glacius, however it bounces unfortunately, and I quickly draw back into cover. Now this is quite a dangerous situation for me, because really he could just advance at me, and there's not that much I could do against that, however luckily he fires and misses, so I come out, take a shot, now I see he isn't even aiming at me, but he turns his gun, no he... He seems to be quite, uh, and yeah, he fired, so now I'm safe, and I take him out. So that's a great penetration on this 120mm gun for you guys. I take a shot from the T-44, but because it wasn't aimed, it maybe hit my turret, and it bounced. So I got quite lucky there. Scores 9 to 8, but my team's capping the base, and unless this T-44 makes a move soon, there's, the enemy team isn't really in a position to do anything against that. Because, except for the T-44, no tank of enemy team's really got the mobility to get to the cap circle in time to break it. So, I'm just going to put pressure on this T-44 here, because the longer I can keep him occupied, the more chances we've got of winning by capping. And also, he's on quite low health, so I should be able to one-shot him. And I've got way better penetration than him, so in a one-on-one -on -one duel, maybe I'll come out on top. We'll see. So he uh, made a run for it, it seems. I'm hoping now that he didn't rush for the cap circle, otherwise we'll be in pr some trouble now if he manages to reset the cap. Oh, but I was quite lucky. He decided not to return to the base, and we pick up our fourth kill. And, oh yeah, an AFKIS. I like that. So... I'm going to feast on this guy now. Just going to quickly speed up the replay a bit. Because me shooting up AFK guys is not really the most exciting thing. You can see how high this gun can roll. And come on, come on. Yes, we get really lucky with our last roll. Roll for 409 damage and managed to take up IS. Yes. So, uh, in my opinion, that was quite a, quite a good bit of exemplary gameplay for this tank because it showed how bad the hull armor is, how bad its aiming time is, but also what it can do in a hull down position. Now let's have a look at the post game stats. So in that game we got a first class mastery badge, a high caliber medal and 143,857 credits. That is a lot of credits. I mean especially considering that this game 
was not completely off the charts, you know, I mean, anyone can do what I did in this game, basically. So, you'll make lots of credits playing the T-34, and also we got quite a lot of experience. Team score-wise, we picked up the most experience by far, actually, and also managed to deal just short of 4,000 damage, and that was, a lot of that damage was actually to um, Tier 9 vehicles, so, uh, especially that VK-45 2b and we punished him quite a lot so yeah you can definitely dish out a lot of damage in the t-34 if you keep that gun firing speaking of keeping that gun firing we fired 16 shots 14 hit 13 penetrated so yeah i think that's quite representative of this gun stats because the accuracy is good if you manage to aim all your shots but you don't always manage to aim your shots fully so uh, that's why not all hit but if they hit they will almost always penetrate because the penetration is just so good they do a lot of alpha damage and yeah here you can see the armor of this tank is not very good although the turret is awesome but people know that and they will never shoot you there unless they don't have another choice so yeah Hull is no good at all. You can see we only managed to block 250 damage with our armor. But, I mean, like you might think, okay, this tank's got very high ammo cost, but even with paying 16,000 for our ammunition, which, fair enough, is a lot, we left this game with 120,000, actually more like 121,000 credits. And that is a lot. And I, I mean... Maybe in your average game you'll be netting something like 80,000 credits, so or I don't know, maybe 60,000, depending on how good you are, but don't expect to get these kind of results every game, but you will get them now and again, and if you're looking to make credits, then T-34 is a great option, definitely. Okay, so I've got another bit of gameplay for you guys, maybe even more successful than this one. We'll see, and after that, we'll have a conclusion about this tank, so let's head in. So, uh, we're mixing it with the big boys now, this is a tier 10 game. Although, I mean, fair enough, there are only two tier 10 tanks on each team, but, I mean, still, <laughs> they are quite a threat, so... Um, yeah, in this game, I'll be showing you a slightly different playstyle to the one I showed you in the last game, which is slightly more aggressive, you don't chill in the back line, but you still have to consider your actions, otherwise... Uh, yeah, if you just rush in, then you'll end up a burning wreck. I just want to quickly pause the replay here because I want to show you that I'm hold down right here. So these enemy tanks here don't really have a chance of penetrating me right now. And thus I managed to deal out quite a lot of early damage against an AMX 5120, T9 French Heavy and a T32. Now unluckily two of our teammates got taken out quite early. And, um, yeah, I'm basically trying to uh, work my way around this uh, church here. I managed to uh, take a good shot at the t enemy T-71, taking him out of the game. That's actually quite a nasty tank removed from the battlefield, so that's good for our team. Now, the, what I'm basically doing here is I'm being... It may not look like it, but I'm actually being super cautious because I'm only go coming around this corner taking shots when I'm sure that nobody's aiming at me because the enemies are distracted. And, I mean, that's the kind of playstyle I was talking about earlier is you have to kind of... Now, for example, this IS-8, he fired, right? So it's safe for me to come around the corner. And you see, because of that, I take quite little damage while dealing out a lot of damage. And that's kind of a playstyle you can develop in city maps, where it's difficult to stay at long range. So instead of that, you can kind of make your allies tank shots for you. That might not sound very nice, but it's really what you have to do in order to get the most out of this really punchy gun you get. I just missed my timing of an enemy VK there. Now, right here, I take a shot from, I think, the E50, or maybe from one of those guys right there. Anyway, it was completely worth it, because I dealt out more damage than I took, and I'm only tier 8, that E50 is tier 9, so he's a bigger threat, so trading shots, if I do more damage, is basically worth it. Now, right here, you can see the abysmal turret traverse speed, I'm not able to turn my gun round. And you also have to develop really good situational awareness 
you cannot afford to tunnel with vision in these kind of situations. I didn't take a shot right there because I realised that probably I wouldn't penetrate anyway, so there wasn't that much I could do, I wasn't aimed. But IS-7, I think he just got hit by RT. And there, we saw the E-100 fire, so it's safe for us to come round and put a meaty shot into his lower glacis. I was blocking my ally there, so I let him come through. And right now, we didn't see the E-100 fire his gun, so he's going to be reloaded by now. So I'm not going around that corner. This poor IS-7 is having a really bad day. It looks like the Lorraine is taking him apart. Now the E-100 fired, or actually it was a Centurion, but still the E-100 is distracted. So, oh yeah, we managed to put him on fire, but unfortunately he was using an automatic fire extinguisher. Our Tiger 2 was not that lucky, but maybe now we can take him out. And yes, we do. Now I just want to quickly point out that again, I was using this wreck for IS-7 here to um, get myself to a hold down position and really that's what you have to do uh, you have to use the battlefield to your advantage in the T-34 oh yeah that's a good shot take that any day of the week and the E-50 gets taken out now Right here, this is a bit embarrassing, so uh, disclaimer, <laughs> so this AMX5120 wants to flank it, <laughs> oh no, I, I fire, <laughs> oh god, I friendly fire, I hit the IS-8, but I don't think that penetrated actually, but still that wasn't very good by me, I should have had better situational awareness there, so unluckily the 5120 gets away unscathed. But um, I predict his movements and decide to go to the next crossroad in order to get a shot, hopefully, into his retreating hole. And, oh, so close. But we tracked him, so that's going to slow down his retreat. And right now I make a bit of a mistake. What I should have done is I should have gone down this road here, because then I could have cut him off. But unfortunately I decide to advance along here and I don't get the kill so that's a shame but um, you know you can't get them all I shouldn't complain I get I'm on two kills in a tier 10 game and that's more than enough so there's only a centurion and the enemy artillery left so we managed to snapshot the centurion 7-1 and win the game okay um, so that might not have looked too spectacular, that game, I'm not sure, but actually, if you consider that this was a tier 10 match, I think it was actually a very good showcase of how you have to play this tank, going hold down, and especially just being super cautious when you come out to take shots and when you don't. In my opinion, this game was a lot better played than the last one, where I took a lot of unnecessary damage. In this round, I took care not to lose too many hit points and it paid out for us in the end. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this game and let's look at the post game stats and after that I'm going to give you my opinion on this tank and whether I think you should buy it or not. So we got an ace tanker badge and a confederate medal that game. So yeah, this is what it's going to take to get an ace tanker in the T-34. I personally took quite long to get it. Again, above one, well above 100,000 credits, 127,000 we got, and 4,100 experience. We got more base experience than last game, about 100 base experience more dealt a bit less damage but the reason why we got more experience was because this is a tier 10 game so it's taken into consideration that the armor of your enemies is thicker and so on so it's more difficult to do damage to them so you get more experience and also more credits for it and yeah what what should i say 15 shots fired 14 hit 13 penned above 4000 damage three hits received of which two penetrated one didn't so um yeah i mean <laughs> This was a tier 10 game, you know, and we finished top on the team, so this tank, although it gets bad matchmaking sometimes, it definitely can look after itself, even if it gets into a bad situation matchmaking-wise. And again, even the credits we were allowed to keep were above 100,000, so that is a lot of money, and imagine having one of these games in the T-34 every day, 
you know, you'll be rich. So, um, yeah, I mean, is the T34 worth getting? It really depends on what you're looking for in a tier 8 premium tank, in my opinion. If what you want is a more agile medium tank kind of thing, maybe the AMX CDC is better for you. If you're looking for a brawler, then probably you should go for the IS-6. But if you like supporting, heavy hitting, but unmaneuverable playstyle of a T-34, similar to a tank destroyer, then this is definitely the tank to go for. I mean, the thing you have to ask yourself is, do I play this game enough and do I like it enough to spend 40 euros just in a tank? Like, it's literally above 40 euros for pixels and code. So, if you enjoy playing the game and you feel like you need to make more credits, then I can definitely recommend this tank. I personally enjoy it a lot. But just take into consideration that it's very expensive and it is not a tank for everyone. You have to like the playstyle. Also, maybe you shouldn't just buy this tank in your first year of playing World of Tanks. Maybe just play it for one year without a premium tank to make up your mind if you really are serious about World of Tanks and if you find out that you really like this game after a year, then go ahead and buy this tank. But it would be a shame if you'd spend that much money on this tank and then say after a few months you'd quit playing the game entirely and that would be 40 euros down the drain. So think well about buying this tank, but I think anybody who's serious about the game and wants to make a lot of credits would be well advised buying the T-34. So, I hope you enjoyed this review, and if you did, consider giving a thumbs up below, or even sub to my channel for more stuff like this. And, uh, yeah, I hope I'll see you next time, or maybe we'll meet each other on the battlefield. You never know. Bye-bye.